All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 45, The Egyptian Pyramid, Chemical Engineering, Acids, Part 1. So in today's episode, I will be explaining the applications for the dilute sulfuric acid solution that was once being produced inside the Great Pyramid of Giza. And as with the previous episodes, I will also be connecting those applications to the chemical analysis of the Red Pyramid staining. Thank you so much to all of the new subscribers here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel. And if you would, please click that little notification bell so that you get noticed whenever the new videos premiere every week. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up new Land of Chem merch and limited first edition print copies of the book. And thank you so much to everyone that's commented on the videos. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, please leave that in the comment section below. I genuinely enjoy interacting with everyone in the comment section. And thank you so much to everyone that's recently purchased a copy of the book. It means the world to me. So thank you all so much for your support. I think that is it for the intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. So in today's video, I will be explaining the applications for the sulfuric acid solution that was once being produced inside of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And I have gone into great detail in previous episodes describing exactly how that was accomplished. So if you're new to the channel, please check out episode 18, my 2021 research expedition recap covering the Great Pyramid of Giza, episode 20, the function of the Great Pyramid part three, and episode 31, Geopolymer and Chemical Sealants. Now, this manufacturing sequence has a remarkable similarity to the modern industrial contact process for the production of sulfuric acid that you can see here. And the subterranean chamber that you can see here function as a water pump to force water up into the contact process or absorption chamber, which is the grand gallery that you can see here. And your quote unquote king's chamber was the sulfur furnace for the production of sulfur dioxides. Now, I have already alluded to the function of the antechamber in previous episodes, and we're going to be discussing that in a later video. As with a full expose episode connecting the function of the Egyptian pyramids to our modern industrial revolution. So please subscribe and stay tuned. And here are a few clips from my 2021 research expedition from inside of this amazing ancient machine. So I hope you enjoy. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, into the Great Pyramid. And this is the passage that was excavated by El Mamun in the process of, well, attempting to find whatever he thought was gonna be in here. This is the original inlet shaft that leads down to the subterranean chamber. And you can get special permission to get down inside there. But that is original. The part that we are in now is not an original part of the structure. Yeah. And put in mind that if he found the original door on the outside, it was only going to lead him to the subterranean chamber. Correct. And all this part was not going to be uh, accessible. Absolutely. That's why we understand the possibility of having more chambers and other pyramids is very possible. And here we go, looking up toward the Grand Gallery. And I will be back with you in just a moment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are inside the quote unquote Grand Gallery. Of course, that is not the technical name that I use in the book, but that is what is conventionally known as here inside the Great Pyramid. And we're looking down toward the modern entrance to the structure. And circling around here is the entrance to the antechamber. All right, so now that you have seen a modern tour inside of this magnificent structure, let's focus on the ancient application for its product, this incredibly reactive chemical, sulfuric acid, which you can see here. And one of the questions that has come up in the comments was, how did they store and transport these acidic solutions? Well, you are looking at one method right here, glass bottles and jars, which these ancient civilization was absolutely producing. 
and you can see here a few of my favorite glass pieces from the Egyptian Museum that immediately caught my attention as perhaps being related to chemistry applications of some sort. And I am fascinated by ancient glass making and the glass itself. And I find all of these pieces to be incredibly captivating regardless of their application. And in this case in particular really had my attention and they definitely intentionally separated all of these items from all of the rest. And you can see here in the top right corner, these look like little test tubes and these large ones could have been storage containers for volatile chemicals like sulfuric acid. And these, you can see the glass column here and the bulb down at the bottom. And it immediately took my mind to this, which is a fractional distillation column. You can see that exact same column here and the beaker or bulb down at the bottom, very similar to what we saw in the previous slide. And here is a fantastic example from the dynastic Egyptian period depicting this small scale chemistry, which you can see here are the beakers from which are flowing this mysterious chemical. And the symbols that you can see here above are all for different metals. So this is a very intriguing symbolic depiction or perhaps even a formula or procedure for the production of chemicals. And you can see right over here on the right corner, these Jed pillars, which I believe were also functional objects. Now, this does come from the dynastic period. However, I have proposed that the Egyptian pyramids were constructed before that. And the legacy of this ancient chemistry did indeed permeate into the dynastic civilization, but just on a smaller scale than it was being produced previously. Now, on to the real topic of today's video, the applications for sulfuric acid. And I've already gone into great depth in the previous episodes explaining how this ancient civilization was utilizing fertilizers, dyes, pigments, and medicines, which we also have prevalent evidence of in the historical record, medicines being first produced by the ancient Egyptians, as well as a host of other applications, all of which are accomplished with sulfuric acid. So for today's video, we're going to stick to the most relevant utilization of this powerful chemical, metallurgy. And here are a few short clips showing the reaction of sulfuric acid with various metals. I hope you enjoy. And the following video comes to us from the Shiva chemist. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, we will be getting to India soon enough. So stay tuned and I will put a link to the original video in the video description below.
All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that brand new Land of Chem merch is finally available at thelandofchem.com. I need to update this slide because I have a brand new t-shirt that is now available. It is the pink t-shirt with the new violet fifth degree logo, the alchemical symbol for hydrochloric acid on a raw image of the central pyramid of Giza. This shirt, I made it for myself and it is absolutely fire, but it is now available on the website, thelandofchem.com. And of course, limited first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids, now available at thelandofchem.com. I will leave a link in the video description below. If you want to help support the channel, just go to the website. You can grab a t-shirt, pick up a copy of the book. Either way, all of the orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. So I will simply say thank you. All right, so now on to the really good stuff. And you can see here the breakdown of the chemical analysis of the red pyramid staining. And just a quick side note, if you have not seen that episode yet, the chemical analysis of the red pyramid staining, what are you doing with your life? That video has less than a thousand views and the content in that episode should have millions and millions of views now. So if you do nothing else today, go back and watch that episode. I will put a link in the video description below. You will thank me later. So now there are no noble metals present in any of these samples. And trust me, I will be getting to that soon, but we have to start here. Sulfuric acid will react with and dissolve all of the metals that are present in these samples. Specifically, and mostly of interest to our topic of conversation are iron, antimony, barium, chromium, nickel, zinc, and zirconium, which you can see here in this image with the exception of iron. So if you have sulfuric acid, you can extract, purify, and then work with all of these metals and the compounds they make. And recall from the previous episode, the metallic sulfide compounds of those catalytic materials we were discussing. Well, what do you think you get when you dissolve metals into sulfuric acids? You get metallic sulfides. Now onto a few metals that do not react well or at all with sulfuric acid. So we have mercury, tungsten, silver, gold, and platinum, which again, we do not find any trace of these elements in the chemical analysis of the red pyramid staining. And you would expect if the concentration of these metals I mentioned in the previous slide were naturally occurring. So I will let that sink in for a second. And these noble metals all require more powerful oxidizing acids to react and dissolve, which we will be getting to in the next episode. So please subscribe and stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 45, the Egyptian Pyramid Chemical Engineering Acids Part 1. So in the next video, we will be moving to the Central Pyramid of Giza and discussing the applications for the even more powerful and reactive substance that was once being produced inside of that magnificent ancient structure. To all the viewers, thank you so much for your support. Please like the video if you like it. If you're enjoying this material, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell. New videos premiere every single week. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, leave that in the comment section below. If you want to help support the channel, thelandofchem.com for limited first edition print copies of the book and brand new Land of Chem merch. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's video. So I will see you next time.